The Book of Lies by Alistair Crowley Chapter Zero through Fifty A A Publication in Classes C and D Official for Babes of the Abyss Imprimatur N Freighter A A Liber three hundred and thirty three The Book of Lies which is also falsely called breaks the wanderings or falsifications of the one thought of freighter per durabo which thought is itself untrue break 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 at the foot of thy stones o sea and i would that i could utter the thoughts that arise in me question mark exclamation point Chapter Zero The Chapter That Is Not a Chapter O oh, The Anti Primal Triad Which Is Not God Nothing Is Nothing Becomes Nothing Is Not The First Triad Which Is God I Am I Utter the Word I Hear the Word the abyss the word is broken up there is knowledge knowledge is relation these fragments are creation the broken manifests light the second triad which is god god the father and mother is concealed in generation god is concealed in the whirling energy of nature god is manifest in gathering harmony consideration the mirror of the sun and of the heart the third triad bearing preparing wavering flowing flashing stability begetting the tenth emanation the world chapter one the sabbath of the goat o oh, the heart of n o x the night of pan pan duality energy death death begetting the supporters of o oh. to beget is to die to die is to beget cast the seed into the field of night life and death are two names of a kill thyself neither of these alone is enough chapter two the cry of the hawk hur hath a secret fourfold name it is do what thou wilt four words not one many all thou child thy name is holy thy kingdom is come thy will is done here is the bread here is the blood bring us through temptation deliver us from good and evil that mine as thine be the crown of the kingdom even now abrahadabra these ten words are for the name of the one chapter three the oyster the brothers of a a are one with the mother of the child the many is as adorable to the one as the one is to the many this is the love of these creation parturition is the bliss of the one coition dissolution is the bliss of the many the all thus interwoven of these is bliss naught is beyond bliss the man delights in uniting with the woman the woman in parting from the child the brothers of a a are women the aspirants to a a are men 
Chapter Four Peaches Soft and hollow, how thou dost overcome the hard and full. It dies, it gives itself. To thee is the fruit. Be thou the bride, thou shalt be the mother hereafter. To all impressions thus, let them not overcome thee, yet let them breed within thee. The least of the impressions, come to its perfection, is pan. Receive a thousand lovers, thou shalt bear but one child. This child shall be the heir of fate the father. Chapter 5 The Battle of the Ants That is not which is. The only word is silence. The only meaning of that word is not. Thoughts are false. Fatherhood is unity disguised as duality. Peace implies war. Power implies war. Harmony implies war. Victory implies war. Glory implies war. Foundation implies war. Alas for the kingdom wherein all these are at war. Chapter 6 Caviar The word was uttered. The one exploded into one thousand million worlds. Each world contained a thousand million spheres. Each sphere contained a thousand million planets. Each planet contained a thousand million stars. Each star contained a many thousand million things. Of these the reasoner took six, and, preening, said, This is the one and the all. These six the adept harmonized, and said, This is the heart of the one and the all. These six were destroyed by the master of the temple, and he spake not. The ash thereof was burnt up by the magus into the word. Of all this did the Ipsissimus know nothing. Chapter 7 The Dinosaurs None are they whose number is six, else were they six indeed. Seven are these six that live not in the city of the pyramids, under the night of Pan. There was Lao Tzu. There was Siddhartha, there was Krishna, there was Tahuti, there was Moshe, there was Dionysus, there was Mahmud. But the seventh men called Perdurabo, for, enduring unto the end, at the end, was not to endure. Amen. Chapter 8 Steeped Horsehair Mind is a disease of semen. All that a man is or may be is hidden therein. Bodily functions are parts of the machine, silent unless in disease. But mind, never at ease, creaketh I. This I persisteth not, posteth not through generations, changeth momently, finally is dead. Therefore is man only himself when lost to himself in the charioting. Chapter 9 The Branks Being is the noun, form is the adjective, matter is the noun, motion is the verb, wherefore hath being clothed itself with form, wherefore hath matter manifested itself in motion. Answer not, O silent one, for there is no wherefore, no because. The name of that is not known. The pronoun interprets, that is, misinterprets, it. Time and space are adverbs. Duality begat the conjunction. The conditioned is father of the preposition. The article also marketh division. But the interjection is the sound that endeth in silence. Destroy thereof the eight parts of speech. The ninth is nigh unto truth. This also must be destroyed before thou enterest into the silence. Aum. 
Chapter 10 Whittlestraws the abyss of hallucination has law and reason but in truth there is no bond between the toys of the gods this reason and law is the bond of the great lie truth 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 crieth the lord of the abyss of hallucinations there is no silence in that abyss for all that men call silence is its speech the abyss is also called hell and the many its name is consciousness and the universe among men but that which neither is silent nor speaks rejoices therein chapter eleven the glowworm concerning the holy three and not knew it had it rahur kuit are only to be understood by the master of the temple they are above the abyss and contain all contradiction in themselves below them is a seeming duality of chaos and babylon these are called father and mother but it is not so they are called brother and sister but it is not so they are called husband and wife but it is not so the reflection of all is pan the night of pan is the annihilation of the all cast down through the abyss is the light the rosy cross the rapture of union that destroys that is the way the rosy cross is the ambassador of pan how infinite is the distance from this to that yet all is here and now nor is there any there or then for all that is what is it but a manifestation that is a part that is a falsehood of that which is not yet that which is not neither is nor is not that which is identity is perfect therefore the law of identity is but a lie for there is no subject and there is no predicate nor is there the contradictory of either of these things holy 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 are these truths that i utter knowing them to be but falsehoods broken mirrors troubled waters hide me o our lady in thy womb for i may not endure the rapture in this utterance of falsehood upon falsehood whose contradictories are also false it seems as if that which i uttered not were true blessed unutterably blessed is the last of the illusions let me play the man and thrust it from me amen chapter twelve the dragonflies i o is the cry of the lower as o i of the higher in figures they are one zero zero one in letters they are joy for when all is equilibriated, when all is beheld from without all, there is joy, joy, joy that is but one facet of a diamond. Every other facet whereof is more joyful than joy itself. Chapter 13 Pilgrim Talk O thou that settest upon the path, false is the phantom that thou seekest when thou hast it thou shalt know all bitterness thy teeth fixed in the sodom apple thus hast thou been lured along that path whose terror else had driven thee far away o thou that strideth upon the middle of the path no phantoms mock thee for the stride's sake thou stridest thus art thou lured along that path whose fascination else had driven thee far away o thou that drawest toward the end of the path effort is no more faster and faster dost thou fall thy weariness is changed into ineffable rest for there is no thou upon that path thou hast become the way chapter fourteen onion peelings the universe is the practical joke of the general 
at the expense of the particular. Quoth Frater Per Durabo, and laughed. But those disciples nearest to him wept, seeing the universal sorrow. Those next to them laughed, seeing the universal joke. Below these certain disciples wept, then certain laughed, others next wept, others next laughed, next others wept, next others laughed. Last came those that wept, because they could not see the joke, and those that laughed, lest they should be thought not to see the joke, and thought it safe to act like Frater Per Durabo. But though Frater Per Durabo laughed openly, he also at the same time wept secretly, and in himself he neither laughed nor wept, nor did he mean what he said. Chapter 15 The Gun Barrel Mighty and erect is this will of mine, this pyramid of fire whose summit is lost in heaven. Upon it have I burned the corpse of my desire. Mighty and erect is this phallus of my will. The seed thereof is that which I have borne within me from eternity, and it is lost within the body of Our Lady of the Stars. I am not I. I am but a hollow tube to bring down fire from heaven. Mighty and marvelous is this weakness, this heaven, which draweth me into her womb, this dome which hideth, which absorbeth me. This is the night wherein I am lost, the love through which I am no longer I. Chapter 16 The Stag Beetle Death implies change and individuality. If thou be that which hath no person, which is beyond the changing, even beyond changelessness, what hast thou to do with death? The bird of individuality is ecstasy, so also is its death. In love the individuality is slain. Who loves not love? Love death, therefore, and long eagerly for it. Die daily. Chapter 17 The Swan There is a swan whose name is ecstasy. It wingeth from the deserts of the north, it wingeth through the blue, it wingeth over the fields of rice, at its coming they push forth the green. In all the universe this swan alone is motionless. It seems to move, as the sun seems to move. Such is the weakness of our sight. O fool, criest thou. Amen. Motion is relative. There is nothing that is still. Against this swan I shot an arrow. The white breast poured forth blood. Men smote me. Then, perceiving that I was but a pure fool, they let me pass. Thus, and not otherwise, I came to the Temple of the Grail. Chapter 18 Dewdrops. Verily, love is death, and death is life to come. Man returneth not again, the stream floweth not uphill. The old life is no more, there is a new life that is not his. Yet that life is of his very essence. It is more he than all that he calls he. In the silence of a dewdrop, is every tendency of his soul, and of his mind, and of his body. It is the quintessence, and the elixir of his being. Therein are the forces that made him, and his father and his father's father before him. This is the dew of immortality. Let this go free, even as it will. Thou art not its master but the vehicle of it. Chapter 19 The Leopard and the Deer The spots of the leopard are the sunlight in the glade. 
pursue thou the deer stealthily at thy pleasure. The dappling of the deer is the sunlight in the glade. Concealed from the leopard do thou feed at thy pleasure. Resemble all that surroundeth thee, yet be thyself, and take thy pleasure among the living. This is that which is written, lurk, in the book of the law. Chapter 20 Samson The universe is in equilibrium. Therefore he that is without it, though his force be but a feather, can overturn the universe. Be not caught within that web, O child of freedom. Be not entangled in the universal lie, O child of truth. Chapter 21 The Blind Webster it is not necessary to understand. It is enough to adore. The god may be of clay. Adore him. He becomes god. We ignore what created us. We adore what we create. Let us create nothing but god. That which causes us to create is our true father and mother. We create in our own image, which is theirs. Let us create, therefore, without fear. For we can create nothing that is not God. Chapter 22 The Despot The waiters of the best eating houses mock the whole world. They estimate every client at his proper value. This I know certainly, because they always treat me with profound respect. Thus they have flattered me, into praising them thus publicly. Yet it is true, and they have this insight because they serve, and because they can have no personal interest in the affairs of those whom they serve. An absolute monarch would be absolutely wise and good. But no man is strong enough to have no interest. Therefore the best king would be pure chance. It is pure chance that rules the universe. Therefore, and only therefore, life is good. Chapter 23 Skidoo What man is at ease in his inn? Get out! Wide is the world and cold. Get out! Thou hast become an initiate. Get out! But thou canst not get out by the way thou camest in. The way out is the way. Get out, for out is love and wisdom and power. Get out. If thou hast tea already, first get you tea, then get O, and so at last get out. Chapter 24 The Hawk and the Blind Worm this book would translate beyond reason into the words of reason. Explain thou snow to them of Andaman. The slaves of reason call this book abuse of language. They are right. Language was made for men to eat and drink, make love, do barter, die. The wealth of a language consists in its abstracts. The poorest tongues have wealth of concretes. Therefore have adepts praise silence. At least it does not mislead as speech does. Also, speech is a symptom of thought. Yet silence is but the negative side of truth. The positive side is beyond even silence. Nevertheless, one true God crieth really you, and the laughter of the death rattle is akin. Chapter 25 The Star Ruby Facing east, in the center, draw deep, deep, deep thy breath, closing thy mouth with thy right forefinger pressed against thy lower lip. Then, dashing down the hand with a great sweep back and out, expelling forcefully thy breath, cry, Apo, Pantos, Caco de monos. With the same forefinger touch thy forehead, 
and say soy thy member and say o fale thy right shoulder and say iscoros thy left shoulder and say eucharistos then clasp thine hands locking the fingers and cry i a o advance to the east imagine strongly a pentagram or right in thy forehead drawing the hands to the eyes fling it forth making the sign of horus and roar chaos retire thine hand in the sign of hor pa krat go round to the north and repeat but scream babylon go round to the west and repeat but say eros go round to the south and repeat but bellow psyche completing the circle widdershins retire to the center and raise thy voice in the pian with these words io pan with the sign of n o x extend the arms in the form of a tau and say low but clear pro mo iungus opiso mo teletarchi epi dexia sinoches eparistera demones flagei gar perimo ho aster ton pente kai in the still ho aster ton hex est ki repeat the cross cabalistic as above and end as thou didst begin chapter twenty six the elephant and the tortoise the absolute and the condition together make the one absolute the second who is the fourth the demiurge whom all nations of men call the first is a lie grafted upon a lie a lie multiplied by a lie fourfold is he the elephant upon whom the universe is poised but the carapace of the tortoise supports and covers all this tortoise is sixfold the holy hexagram these six and four are ten ten the one manifested that returns to the not unmanifest the almighty the all ruler the all knower the all father adored by all men and by me abhorred be thou accursed be thou abolished be thou annihilated amen chapter twenty seven the sorcerer a sorcerer by the power of his magic had subdued all things to himself would he travel he could fly through space more swiftly than the stars would he eat drink and take his pleasure there was none that did not instantly obey his bidding in the whole system of ten million times ten million spears upon the two and twenty million planes he had his desire and with all this he was but himself alas chapter twenty eight the pole star love is all virtue since the pleasure of love is but love and the pain of love is but love love taketh no heed of that which is not and of that which is absence exalteth love and presence exalteth love love moveth from height to height of ecstasy and faileth never the wings of love droop not with time nor slacken for life or for death love destroyeth self uniting self with that which is not self so that love breedeth all and none in one is it not so no 
then thou art not lost in love. Speak not of love. Love always yieldeth. Love always hardeneth. Maybe I write it but to write her name. Chapter 29 The Southern Cross Love, I love you. Night, night, cover us. Thou art night, O my love, and there are no stars but thine eyes. Dark night, sweet night, so warm and yet so fresh, so scented, yet so holy. Cover me, cover me. Let me be no more. Let me be thine. Let me be thou. Let me be neither thou nor I. Let there be love in night and night in love. N O X, the night of Pan, and Layla, the night before his threshold. Chapter 30 John of Dreams. Dreams are imperfections of sleep. Even so is consciousness the imperfection of waking. Dreams are impurities in the circulation of the blood. Even so is consciousness a disorder of life. Dreams are without proportion, without good sense, without truth. So also is consciousness. Awake from dream, the truth is known. Awake from waking, the truth is the unknown. Chapter 31 The Garret It moves from motion into rest, and rests from rest into motion. These it does alway, for time is not. So that it does neither of these things, it does that one thing which we must express by two things, neither of which possesses any rational meaning. Yet its doing, which is no doing, is simple and yet complex, is neither free nor necessary, for all these ideas express relation, and it, comprehending all relation in its simplicity, is out of all relation, even with itself. All this is true and false, and it is true and false to say that it is true and false. Strain forth thy intelligence, O man, O worthy one, O chosen of it, to apprehend the discourse of the Master. For thus thy reason shall at last break down, as the fetter is struck from the slave's throat. Chapter 32 the mountaineer consciousness is a symptom of disease all that moves well moves without will all skillfulness all strain all intention is contrary to ease practice a thousand times and it becomes difficult a thousand thousand and it becomes easy a thousand thousand times a thousand thousand and it is no longer thou that doeth it, but it that doeth itself through thee. Nor until then is that which is done well done. Thus spoke Frater Per Durabo, as he leapt from rock to rock of the moraine, without ever casting his eyes upon the ground. Chapter 33 Baphomet a black two-headed eagle is God. Even a black triangle is he. In his claw he beareth a sword. Yea, a sharp sword is held therein. This eagle was burnt up in the great fire, yet not a feather is scorched. This eagle is swallowed up in the great sea, yet not a feather is wetted. So flieth he in the air and lighteth upon the earth at his pleasure. So spake Iacobus Burgundus Molinsis, the grand master of the temple, and of the god that is ass-headed, did he dare not speak. Chapter 34 The Smoking Dog 
Each act of man is the twist and double of an hair. Love and death are the greyhounds that course him. God bred the hounds and taketh his pleasure in the sport. This is the comedy of Pan, that man should think he hunteth, while those hounds hunt him. This is the tragedy of man, when facing love and death he turns to bay. He is no more hare, but boar. There are no other comedies or tragedies. Cease then to be the mockery of God. In savagery of love and death live thou and die. Thus shall his laughter be thrilled through with ecstasy. Chapter 35 Venus of Milo Life is as ugly and necessary as the female body. Death is as beautiful and necessary as the male body. The soul is beyond male and female, as it is beyond life and death. Even as the lingam and the yoni are but diverse developments of one organ, so also are life and death but two phases of one state. So also the absolute and the conditioned are but forms of that. What do I love? There is no form, no being, to which I do not give myself wholly up. Take me who will. Chapter 36 The Star Sapphire Let the adept be armed with his magic rood, and provide him with his mystic rose. In the center, let him give the LVX signs. Or, if he know them, if he will and dare do them, and can keep silent about them, the signs of N-O-X, being the signs of Puer, Vir, Puella, Mulier. Omit the sign I-R. Then let him advance to the east, and make the holy hexagram, saying, Pater et Mater. Unus Deus Ararita. Let him go round to the south, make the holy hexagram, and say, Mater et Filius, Unus Deus Ararita. Let him go round to the west, make the holy hexagram, and say, Filius et Filia, Unus Deus Ararita. Let him go round to the north, make the holy hexagram, and then say, Filia et pater unus deus ararita. Let him then return to the center, and so to the center of all, making the rosy cross, as he may know how, saying, Ararita, Ararita, Ararita. In this the signs shall be those of Set Triumphant and of Baphomet. Also shall Set appear in the circle. Let him drink of the sacrament and let him communicate the same. Then let him say, Omnia in duos, duo in unum, unus in nihil, haec nec quator, nec omnia nec duo, nec unus nec nihil sunt. Gloria patri et matri et filio, et filiae et spiritui sancto, externo et spiritui sancto, Interno ut erat est erat in saecula, saeculorum sex in uno per nomen septum, in uno errita. Let him then repeat the signs of LVX, but not the signs of NOX, for it is not he that shall arise in the sign of Isis rejoicing. Chapter 37 Dragons Thought is the shadow of the eclipse of Luna. Samadhi is the shadow of the eclipse of soul. The moon and the earth are the non-ego and the ego. The sun is that. Both eclipses are darkness. Both are exceedingly rare. The universe itself is light. Chapter 38 Lambskin Cowan skidoo, tile, 
swear to hile all this is the mystery life mind is the traitor slay mind let the corpse of mine lie unburied on the edge of the great sea death this is the mystery tile cowan skidoo chapter thirty nine the luby only lubies find excellence in these words it is unthinkable that a is not a to reverse this is but to revert to the normal yet by forcing the brain to accept propositions of which one set is absurdity the other truism a new function of brain is established vague and mysterious and all indefinite are the contents of this new consciousness yet they are somehow vital by use they become luminous unreason becomes experience this lifts the leaden-footed soul of the experience of that of which reason is the blasphemy but without the experience these words are the lies of a luby yet a luby to thee and a booby to me a balacious ruby to god may be chapter forty the Hymog. a red rose absorbs all colors but red red is therefore the one color that is not this law reason time space all limitation blinds us to the truth all that we know of man nature god is just that which they are not it is that which they throw off as repugnant the high mog is only visible in so far as he is imperfect then are they all glorious who seem not to be glorious as the high mog is all glorious within it may be so how then distinguish the inglorious and perfect high mog from the inglorious man of earth distinguish not but thyself extinguish high mog thou art and high mog shall thou be chapter forty one corn beef hash in v v v v v is the great work perfect therefore none is that pertaineth not to v v v v v in any may he manifest yet in one hath he chosen to manifest and this one hath given his ring as a seal of authority to the work of the a a through the colleagues of freighter per durabo but this concerns themselves in their administration it concerneth none below the grade of exempt adept and such an one only by command also since below the abyss reason is lord let men seek by experiment and not by questionings chapter forty two dust devils in the wind of the mind arises the turbulence called i it breaks down shower the barren thoughts all life is choked this desert is the abyss wherein is the universe the stars are but thistles in that waste yet this desert is but one spot accursed in the world of bliss now and again travellers cross the desert they come from the great sea and to the great sea they go as they go they spill water one day they will irrigate the desert till it flower see five footprints of a camel v v v v v chapter forty three mulberry tops black blood upon the altar and the rustle of angel wings above black blood of the sweet fruit the bruised the violated bloom that setteth the wheel a-spinning in the spire death is the veil of life and life of death for both are gods this is that which is written a feast for life and a greater feast for death in the book of the law the blood is the life of the individual offer then blood chapter forty four the mass of the phoenix 
the magician his breast bare stands before an altar on which are his burin bell thurible and two of the cakes of light in the sign of the enterer he reaches west across the altar and cries hail ra that goest in thy bark into the caverns of the dark he gives the sign of silence and takes the bell and fire in his hands east of the altar see me stand with light and music in mine hand he strikes eleven times upon the bell three 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 five 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 three 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 and places the fire in the thurible i strike the bell i light the flame i utter the mysterious name abrahadabra he strikes eleven times upon the bell now i begin to pray thou child holy thy name and undefiled thy reign is come thy will is done here is the bread here is the blood bring me through midnight to the sun save me from evil and from good take thy one crown of all the ten even now and here be mine amen he puts the first cake in the fire of the thurible i burn the incense cake proclaim these adorations of thy name he makes them as in liber legis and strikes again eleven times upon the bell with the burin he then makes upon his breast the proper sign behold this bleeding breast of mine gashed with the sacramental sign he puts the second cake to the wound i staunch the blood the wafer soaks it up and the high priest invokes he eats the second cake this bread i eat this oath i swear as i inflame myself with prayer there is no grace there is no guilt this is the law do what thou wilt he strikes eleven times upon the bell and cries abrahadabra i entereth in with woe and mirth and now go forth and with thanksgiving to do my pleasure on the earth among the legions of the living he goeth forth chapter forty five chinese music explain this happening it must have a natural cause it must have a supernatural cause let these two asses be set to grind corn may might must should probably may be we may safely assume ought it is hardly questionable almost certainly poor hacks and let them be turned out to grass proof is only possible in mathematics and mathematics is only a matter of arbitrary conventions and yet doubt is a good servant but a bad master a perfect mistress but a nagging wife white is white is the lash of the overseer white is black is the watchword of the slave the master takes no heed the chinese cannot help thinking that the octave has five notes the more necessary anything appears to my mind the more certain it is that i only assert a limitation i slept with faith and found a corpse in my arms on waking i drank and danced all night with doubt and found her a virgin in the morning chapter forty six buttons and rosettes the cause of sorrow is the desire of the one to the many or of the many to the one this also is the cause of joy but the desire of one to another is all of sorrow its birth is hunger and its death satiety the desire of the moth for the star at least saves him satiety hunger thou o man for the infinite be insatiable even for the finite thus at the end shalt thou devour the finite and become the infinite be thou more greedy than the shark more full of yearning than the wind among the pines the weary pilgrim struggles on the satiated pilgrim stops 
the road winds uphill all law all nature must be overcome do this by virtue of that in thyself before which law and nature are but shadows chapter forty seven windmill words asana gets rid of anatomy consciousness pranayama gets rid of physiology consciousness involuntary breaks yama and nayama get rid of ethical consciousness voluntary breaks pratyara gets rid of the objective dharana gets rid of the subjective dhyana gets rid of the ego samadhi gets rid of the soul impersonal asana destroys the static body nama pranayama destroys the dynamic body rupa yama destroys the emotions niyama destroys the passions vedana dharana destroys the perceptions sana dhyana destroys the tendencies sankara samadhi destroys the consciousness vinanam homard ala thermidor destroys the digestion the last of these facts is the one of which i am most certain chapter thirty eight mom wraths the early bird catches the worm and the twelve-year-old prostitute attracts the ambassador neglect not the dawn meditation the first plover's eggs fetch the highest prices the flower of virginity is esteemed by the pandar neglect not the dawn meditation early to bed and early to rise makes a man healthy wealthy and wise but late to watch and early to pray brings him across the abyss they say neglect not the dawn meditation chapter forty nine warata blossoms seven are the veils of the dancing girl in the harem of it seven are the names and seven are the lamps beside her bed seven eunuchs guard her with drawn swords no man may come nigh unto her in her wine cup are seven streams of the blood of the seven spirits of god seven are the heads of the beast whereupon she rides the head of an angel the head of a saint the head of a poet the head of an adulterous woman the head of a man of valor the head of a satyr and the head of a lion serpent seven letters hath her holiest name and it is narrator's note crowley here illustrates a seal of a seven-pointed star beginning from the westmost point each point of the star contains a letter spelling the name of babylon in the center of the star is the greek symbol for theta crosses extend from its western northern and eastern boundaries to the left of the westmost cross is the number seventy seven to the left of the northmost cross is the number seven to the right of the northmost cross is the number seven to the right of the eastmost cross is the number seventy seven by itself at the southernmost boundary of theta is the number seven this is the seal upon the ring that is on the forefinger of it and it is the seal upon the tombs of them whom she hath slain here is wisdom let him that hath understanding count the number of our lady for it is the number of a woman and her number is an hundred and fifty and six chapter fifty the vigil of st hubert in the forest god met the stag beetle hold worship me quoth god for i am all great all good all wise the stars are but sparks from the forges of my smiths yea verily and amen said the stag beetle all this do i believe and that devoutly then why do you not worship me because i am real and you are only imaginary but the leaves of the forest rustled with the laughter of the wind said wind and wood they neither of them know anything 
End of Chapter Zero through Fifty. Chapters Fifty One through Ninety One. Chapter Fifty One Terrier Work. Doubt. Doubt thyself. Doubt even if thou doubtest thyself. Doubt all. Doubt even if thou doubtest all. It seems sometimes as if beneath all conscious doubt there lay some deepest certainty. Oh, kill it! Slay the snake! The horn of the doubt goat be exalted! Dive deeper, ever deeper, into the abyss of mind, until thou unearth the fox that. On, hounds! Yoinks! Tally-ho! Bring that to bay! Then wind the mort. Chapter 52 the bull baiting. Four score and eleven books wrote I. In each did I expound the great work fully, from the beginning even unto the end thereof. Then at last came certain men unto me, saying, O master, expound thou the great work unto us, O master. And I held my peace. O generation of gossipers, who shall deliver you from the wrath that is fallen upon you? O oh, babblers, prattlers, talkers, loquacious ones, tattlers, chewers of the red rag that inflameth a peace the Redeemer to fury, learn first what is work, and the great work is not so far beyond. Chapter 53 The Dowser Once round the meadow, brother does the hazel twig dip, Twice round the meadow, brother does the hazel twig dip. Thrice round the paddock, highly, lowly, wily, holy, dip, dip, dip. Then neighed the horse in the paddock, and lo, its wings. For whoso findeth the spring beneath the earth, maketh the treaders of earth to course the heavens. This spring is threefold, of water, but also of steel, and of seasons. Also this paddock is the toad that hath the jewel between his eyes. Aumani pod men whom keep us from evil. Chapter 54 Eavesdroppings Five and forty apprentice masons out of work. Fifteen fellow craftsmen out of work. Three master masons out of work. All these sat on their haunches, waiting the report of the sojourner, for the word was lost. This is the report of the sojourners. The word was love, and its number is an hundred and eleven. Then said each amo, for its number is an hundred and eleven. Each took the trowel from his lap, whose number is an hundred and eleven. Each called moreover on the goddess Nina, for her number is an hundred and eleven. Yet with all this went the work awry, for the word of the law is Thelema. Chapter 55 The Drooping Sunflower The one thought vanished. All my mind was torn to rags. Nay, nay, my head was mashed into wood pulp, and thereon the daily newspaper was printed. Thus wrote I, since my one love was torn from me. I cannot work. I cannot think. I seek distraction here. I seek distraction there. But this is all my truth, that I who love have lost. And how may I regain? I must have money to get to America. O mage, sage, gauge thy wage, or in the page of thine age is written rage. Oh, my darling, we should not have spent ninety pounds in that three weeks in Paris. Slash the brakes on thine arms with a pole-axe. Chapter 56 Trouble with Twins Holy, 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 unto five hundred and fifty-five times holy be Our Lady of the Stars. Holy, 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 Unto one hundred and fifty-six times, holy be Our Lady that rideth upon the beast. 
holy, 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 unto the number of times necessary and appropriate, be our Lady Isis in her millions of names, all mother, genitrix, meritrix. Yet holier than all these to me is Layla, night and death, for her do I blaspheme alike the finite and the infinite. So wrote not Frater per Durabo, but the imp Crowley in his name. For forgery, let him suffer penal servitude for seven years, or at least let him do pranayama all the way home. Home? Nay, but to the house of the harlot whom he loveth not. For it is Layla that he loveth. And yet who knoweth which is Crowley? and which is Frater Per Durabo. Chapter 57 The Duck-Billed Platypus Dirt is matter in the wrong place. Thought is mind in the wrong place. Matter is mind, so thought is dirt. Thus argued he, the wise one, not mindful that all place is wrong. For not until the place is perfected by a T saith he placet the rose uncrucified droppeth its petals without the rose the cross is a dry stick worship then the rosy cross and the mystery of two in one and worship him that swore by his holy tea that one should not be one except in so far as it is two i am glad that layla is afar no doubt clouds love chapter fifty eight Hagai howlings haggard am i and hyena i hunger and howl men think it laughter ha 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 there is nothing movable or immovable under the firmament of heaven on which i may write the symbols of the secret of my soul Yea, though I were lowered by ropes into the utmost caverns and vaults of eternity, there is no word to express even the first whisper of the initiator in mine ear. Yea, I abhor birth, ululating lamentations of night. Agony, agony, the light within me breathes veils, the song within be dumbness. God! In what prism may any man analyze my light? Immortal are the adepts, and yet they die. They die of shame unspeakable. They die as the gods die, for sorrow. Wilt thou endure unto the end, O Frater Per Durabo, O lamp in the abyss? Thou hast the keystone of the royal arch, yet the apprentices, instead of making bricks put the straws in their hair and think they are jesus christ o sublime tragedy and comedy of the great work chapter fifty nine the tailless monkey there is no help but hotch pot in the skies when asticus sees crabs and lobsters rise man that has spine and hopes of heaven to be lacks the amoeba's immortality what protoplasm gains in mobile mirth is loss of the stability of earth matter and sense and mine have had their day nature presents the bill and all must pay if as i am not i were free to choose how buddhahood would battle with the booze my certainty that destiny is good rests on its picking me for buddhahood were I a drunkard, I should think I had good evidence that fate was bloody bad. Chapter 60 The Wound of Amfortas The self-mastery of Percival became the self-masturbatory of the bourgeois. Virtus has become virtue. The qualities which have made a man, a race, a city, a caste, must be thrown off death is the penalty of failure as it is written in the hour of success sacrifice 
that which is dearest to thee, unto the infernal gods. The Englishman lives upon the excrement of his forefathers. All moral codes are worthless in themselves. Yet in every new code there is hope, provided always that the code is not changed because it is too hard, but because it is fulfilled. The dead dog floats with the stream. In Puritan France the best women are harlots. In vicious England the best women are virgins. If only the Archbishop of Canterbury were to go naked in the streets and beg his bread, the new Christ, like the old, is the friend of publicans and sinners, because his nature is ascetic. Oh, if every man did no matter what, provided that it is the one thing that he will not and cannot do. Chapter 61 The Fool's Knot O fool, begetter of both I and not, resolve this knotty knot. O, I, this I and O, I O, I A O, for I O, I, to Nibbana's O. I pay, pay, the dissolution of the house of God, for pay comes after O, after I N, that triumphs over Aleph in Ein, that is O. Opus, the work, the opening of the eye, thou naughty boy, thou openest the eye of Horus to the blind eye that weeps. The upright one in thine uprightness rejoiceth. Death to all fishes. Chapter 62 Twig The phoenix hath a bell for sound, fire for sight, a knife for touch, two cakes, one for taste, the other for smell. He standeth before the altar of the universe at sunset, when earth life fades. He summons the universe, and crowns it with magic light to replace the sun of natural light. He prays unto, and give homage to, Ra Hor Kuit, to him he then sacrifices. The first cake burnt illustrates the profit drawn from the scheme of incarnation. The second, mixed with his life's blood and eaten, illustrates the use of the lower life to feed the higher life. He then takes the oath and becomes free, unconditioned, the absolute. Burning up in the flame of his prayer, and born again, the phoenix. Chapter 63 Marjorie Daw I love Layla, I lack Layla. Where is the mystic grace, saith thou? Who told thee, man, that Layla is not knew it, and I had it? I destroyed all things, they are reborn in other shapes. I gave up all for one. This one hath given up its unity for all. I wrenched dog backwards to find God. Now God barks. Think me not fallen because I love Layla and lack Layla. I am the master of the universe. Then give me a heap of straw in a hut and Layla naked. Amen. Chapter 64 Constancy. I was discussing oysters with a crony. God sent me the angels, Din and Doni. And man of spunk, they urged, would hardly choose to breakfast every day chez La Perouse. No, I replied, he would not do so, but think of this woe if La Perouse were shut. I eat these oysters and I drink this wine solely to drown this misery of mine. Yet the last height of consolation's cold, its pinnacle, is not to be consoled. And though I sleep with Jane and Eleanor, I feel no better than I did before. And Julian only fixes in my mind, even before, feels better than behind. Your mercurial spirits be so kind as to enable me to raise the wind. Put me in Layla's arms again, the accursed, leaving me that else how may do his worst. 
Doni and Den, perceiving me inspired, conceived their task was finished, they retired. I turned upon my friend and breaking bounds, borrowed a trifle of two hundred pounds. Chapter 65 Sick Transient At last I lifted up mine eyes and beheld, and lo, the flames of violet were become as tendrils of smoke, as mist at sunset upon the marshlands, and in the midst of the moon pool of silver was the lily of white and gold. In this lily is all honey, in this lily that flowereth at the midnight, in this lily is all perfume, in this lily is all music, and it enfolded me. Thus the disciples that watched found a dead body kneeling at the altar. Amen. Chapter 66 The Praying Mantis Say, God is one. This I obeyed. For a thousand and one times a night, for one thousand nights and one, did I affirm the unity. But night only means Layla. And unity in God are not worth even her blemishes. Allah is only sixty-six, but Layla counteth up to seven and seventy. Yea, the night shall cover all. The night shall cover all. Chapter 67 Sodom Apples I have brought pleasant trifles, and thus soothed my lack of Layla. Light is my wallet, and my heart is also light. And yet I know that the clouds will gather closer for the false clearing. The mirage will fade. Then will the desert be thirstier than before. O ye who dwell in the dark night of the soul, beware most of all of every herald of the dawn. O ye who dwell in the city of the pyramids, beneath the night of Pan, Remember that ye shall see no more light, but that of the great fire that shall consume your dust to ashes. Chapter 68 Manna At four o'clock there is hardly anybody in Rumpelmeyer's. I have my choice of place and service. The babble of the apes will begin soon enough. Pioneers, O oh pioneers! Sat not Elijah under the juniper tree and wept? Was not Muhammad forsaken in Mecca, and Jesus in Gethsemane? These prophets were sad at heart, but the chocolate at Rumpelmeyer's is great, and the mousse noir is like Nephthys for perfection. Also there are little meringues with cream and chestnut pulp, very velvety seductions. Sail I not towards Layla within seven days? Be not sad at heart, O prophet, the babble of the apes will presently begin. Nay, rejoice exceedingly, for after all the babble of the apes, the silence of the night. Chapter 69 The Way to Suck Seed and the Way to Suck Eggs This is the holy hexagram. Plunge from the height, O God, and interlock with man. Plunge from the height, O man, and interlock with beast. The red triangle is the descending tongue of grace. The blue triangle is the ascending tongue of prayer. This interchange, the double gift of tongues, the word of double power, abrahadabra, is the sign of the great work. For the great work is accomplished in silence. And behold, is not that word equal to Cheth, that is Cancer, whose sigil is sixty-nine? This work also eats up itself, accomplishes its own end, nourishes the worker, leaves no seed, is perfect in itself. Little children love one another. Chapter 70 Broomstick Babblings Frater Perdurabo is of the Sanhedrim of the Sabbath, say men. He is the old goat himself, say women. 
Therefore do all adore him. The more they detest him, the more do they adore him. I let us offer the obscene kiss. Let us seek the mystery of the gnarled oak and of the glacier torrent. To him let us offer up our babes. Around him let us dance in the mad moonlight. But Freighter Per Durabo is nothing but an eye. What eye none knoweth. Skip witches, hop toads, take your pleasure. For the play of the universe is the pleasure of Freighter Per Durabo. Chapter 71 King's College Chapel For mind and body alike there is no purgative like pranayama, no purgative like pranayama. For mind, for body, for mind and body alike, alike, there is, there is, there is no purgative, no purgative like pranayama, pranayama, pranayama. Yea, for mind and body alike there is no purgative, no purgative, no purgative for mind and body alike, no purgative, purgative, purgative like pranayama. No purgative for mind and body alike, like pranayama, like pranayama, like prana, 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 pranayama, pranayama. Amen. Chapter 72 Hashed Pheasant Shemhamfarash, all hail divided name, utter it once, O mortal of Arash. The universe were swallowed up in flame, Shemhamfarash. Nor deem that thou amid the cosmic crash may find one thing of all those things the same. The world has gone to everlasting smash. No, if creation did possess an aim, it does not. It were only to make hash of that most high and that most holy game, Shemhamfarash. Chapter 73 the devil, the ostrich, and the orphan child. Death rides the camel of initiation. Thou humped and stiff-necked one that groanest in thine asana, death will relieve thee. Bite not, Zelator dear, but bide. Ten days didst thou go with water in thy belly? Thou shalt go twenty more with a firebrand at thy rump. Aye, all thine aspiration is to death. Death is the crown of all thine aspiration. Triple is the cord of silver moonlight. It shall hang thee, O holy one, O hanged man, O camel termination of the third person plural, for thy multiplicity, thou ghost of a non-ego. Could but thy mother behold thee, O thou unt, the infinite snake Ananta that surroundeth the universe is but the coffin worm. Chapter 74 Carey Street When nothing became conscious, it made a bad bargain. This consciousness acquired individuality, a worse bargain. The hermit asked for love, worst bargain of all. And now he has let his girl go to America to have success in life. Blank loss. Is there no end to this immortal ache that haunts me, haunts me, sleeping or awake? If I had Layla, how could I forget time, age, and death, insufferable fret? Were I an hermit, how could I support the pain of consciousness, the curse of thought? Even were I that, there still were one sore spot, the abyss that stretches between that and not. Still the first step is not so far away. The Mauritania sails on Saturday. Chapter 75 Plover's Eggs Spring beans and strawberries are in. Goodbye to the oyster. If I really knew what I wanted, I could give up Layla or give up everything for Layla. But what I want varies from hour to hour. This wavering is the root of all compromise. 
and so of all good sense. With this gift a man can spend his seventy years in peace. Now is this well or ill? Emphasize gift. Then man. Then spend. Then seventy years. And lastly, peace. And change the intonations. Each time reverse the meaning. I would show you how, but for the moment, I prefer to think of Layla. Chapter 66 Phaeton No, yes, perhaps, oh, I, I, hi, why? No, hail, all ye spavine gelded hamstrung horses, ye shall surpass the planets in their courses. How, not by speed, nor strength, nor power to stay, but by the silence that succeeds the nay. Chapter 77 The Sublime and Supreme Septenary in its mature magical manifestation through matter, as it is written, and he goat also. Layla Chapter 78 Wheel and Woe The Great Wheel of Samsara, the Wheel of the Law, Dhamma, the wheel of the tarot, the wheel of the heavens, the wheel of life. All these wheels be one, yet of all these the wheel of the tarot alone avails thee consciously. Meditate long and broad and deep, O man, upon this wheel, revolving it in thy mind. Be this thy task, to see how each card springs necessarily from each other card even in due order, from the fool to the ten of coins. Then when thou knowest the wheel of destiny complete, mayest thou perceive that will which moved it first. There is no first or last, and lo, thou art passed through the abyss. Chapter 79 The Ball Bullier some men look into their minds, into their memories, and find naught but pain and shame. These then proclaim the good law unto mankind. These preach renunciation, virtue, cowardice in every form. These whine eternally, smug, toothless, hairless coot, debauch emasculated Buddha, come ye to me. I have a trick to make you silent, O ye foamers at the mouth. Nature is wasteful, but how well she can afford it. Nature is false, but I'm a bit of a liar myself. Nature is useless, but then how beautiful she is. Nature is cruel, but I too am a sadist. The game goes on. It may have been too rough for Buddha but it's, if anything, too dull for me. Viens bu negre, dom moi te lèvres onco. Chapter 80 Blackthorn The price of existence is eternal warfare. Speaking as an Irishman, I prefer to say, the price of eternal warfare is existence, and melancholy as existence is, the price is well worth paying. Is there a government? Then I'm again it. To hell with the bloody English. O oh, Frater Perdurabo, how unworthy are these sentiments. Do you want a clip on the jaw? Chapter 81 Lewis Ling I am not an anarchist in your sense of the word. Your brain is too dense for any known explosive to affect it. I am not an anarchist in your sense of the word. Fancy a policeman let loose on society. While there exists the Burgess, the hunting man, or any man with ideals less than Shelley's, and self-discipline less than Loyola's, in short, any man who falls far short of myself, I am against anarchy and for feudalism. Every emancipator has enslaved the free. Chapter 81 Borscht 
Witch moon that turnest all the streams to blood, I take this hazel rod and stand and swear, An oath beneath this blasted oaken bear, That rears its agony above the flood, Whose swollen mask mutters an atheist prayer. What oath may stand the shock of this offense? There is no eye, no joy, no permanence. Which moon of blood eternal ebb and flow, Of baffled birth and death still lurks a change, And all the leopards in thy woods that range, And all the vampires in their bows that glow, Brooding on bloodthirst, these are not so strange. And fierce as life's unfailing shower these die, Yet time rebears them through eternity. Hear then the oath which moon of blood dread moon, let all thy striges and thy ghouls attend. He that endureth even to the end hath sworn that love's own corpse shall lie at noon, even in the coffin of its hopes and spend, all the force won by its old woe and stress, in now annihilating nothingness. This chapter is called Imperial Purple and a Punic War. Chapter 83 the blind pig many becomes two two one one not what comes to not what shall the adept give up his hermit life and go eating and drinking and making merry ay shall he not do so he knows that the many is not and having not enjoys that not even in the enjoyment of the many for when not becomes absolute not, it becomes again the many, and this many and this not are identical. They are not correlatives or phases of some one deeper absence of idea. They are not aspects of some further light. They are they. Beware, O oh my brother, lest this chapter deceive thee. Chapter 84 the avalanche only through devotion to freighter perdurabo may this book be understood how much more then should he devote himself to iowas for the understanding of the holy book of thelema yet must he labor underground eternally the sun is not for him nor the flowers nor the voices of the birds for he is passed beyond all these Yea, verily, oft times he is weary. It is well that the weight of the karma of the infinite is with him. Therefore is he glad indeed, for he hath finished the work, and the reward concerneth him no whit. Chapter 85 Borborygmi I distrust any thoughts uttered by any man whose health is not robust. All other thoughts are surely symptoms of disease. Yet these are often beautiful, and may be true, within the circle of the conditions of the speaker. And yet again, do we not find that the most robust of men express no thoughts at all? They eat, drink, sleep, and copulate in silence. What better proof of the fact that all thought is dis-ease? We are Strasbourg geese. The tastiness of our talk comes from the disorder of our bodies. We like it. This only proves that our tastes also are depraved and debauched by our disease. Chapter 86 Tat Ex nihilo N I H I L Feet N the fire that twisteth itself and burneth like a scorpion. I, the unsullied, ever-flowing water. H, the interpenetrating spirit, without and within, is not its name Abrahadabra. I, the unsullied, ever-flowing air. L, the green, fertile earth. Fierce are the fires of the universe and on their daggers they hold aloft the bleeding heart of earth. Upon the earth lies water, sensuous and sleepy. Above the water hangs air, and above air, but also below fire, 
and in all the fabric of all being woven on its invisible design is aether chapter eighty seven mandarin meals there is a dish of shark's fin and of sea slug well set in bird's nests oh also there is a souffle most exquisite of chow chow these did i devise but i have never tasted anything to match the narrator's note crowley here illustrates a symbol consisting of a vertical oroboros superimposed over an inverted cross with two vertical bars one to the left and one to the right of the central intersection which she gave me before she went away march twenty second nineteen twelve e v chapter eighty eight gold bricks teach us your secret master yap my yahoos then for the hardness of their hearts and for the softness of their heads i taught them magic but alas teach us your real secret master how to become invisible how to acquire love and oh beyond all how to make gold but how much gold will you give me for the secret of infinite riches then said the foremost and most foolish master it is nothing but here is an hundred thousand pounds this did i deign to accept and whispered in his ear this secret a sucker is born every minute chapter eighty nine unprofessional conduct i am annoyed about the number eighty nine i shall avenge myself by writing nothing in this chapter that too is wise for since i am annoyed i could not write even a reasonably decent lie chapter ninety starlight behold i have lived many years and i have travelled in every land that is under the dominion of the sun and i have sailed the seas from pole to pole now do i lift up my voice and testify that all is vanity on earth except the love of a good woman and that good woman layla and i testify that in heaven all is vanity for i have journeyed oft and sojourned oft in every heaven except the love of our lady babylon and i testify that beyond heaven and earth is the love of our lady knew it and seeing that i am old and well stricken in years and that my natural forces fail therefore do i rise up in my throne and call upon the end for i am youth eternal and force infinite and at the end is she that was layla and babylon and knew it being chapter ninety one the heikel a m e n end of the book of lies by alistair crowley